it is another week and with another week comes another set of Premier League fixtures for us to predict as we always do first we're going to look back at the previous game week see what predictions we got right see which ones we didn't most of them <laughs> let's take a look at last week and we're going to start off with the Saturday fixtures and Manchester City versus Newcastle United I predicted 2-1 to Man City just 2-0 so yeah, City comfortably dispatched Newcastle, and while the Magpies did have their chances, they could just not finish. I mean, they had their fair share of chances, but they just could not score a goal. Then we move on to Chelsea versus Leeds. I predicted 1-0. It was actually 1-0 to Chelsea. And fair play to Potter, who finally grabs another win for Chelsea. Their first is January, which is impressive in a bad way. <laughs> It wasn't an assured win by any means, but for fun, it was the difference that made sure all three points stayed in London. Then move on to Arsenal versus Bournemouth. I predicted 3-0 to Arsenal. It was actually 3-2. The points were almost shared at the Emirates. And if it wasn't for a Reese Nelson last-minute screamer, they would have been. There were plenty of dodgy refereeing decisions in this match, but Arsenal still came out of it with three points, keeping their title hopes alive. Then move on to Aston Villa versus Crystal Palace. I predicted 1-0. It's actually 1-0 to Villa. Despite a Palace player scoring, it was Villa who ran out winners. There wasn't really much to separate either side, to be fair. Even after Zaha had a goal disallowed. Yeah, Palace also finished with 10 men, so it, it, it didn't look good for them at all. And then we move on to Brighton and Hove Albion versus West Ham United. I predicted 3-1 to Brighton. It was actually 4-0. And Brighton absolutely dominated West Ham in this match. The game with the Amex was pretty much all Brighton, and West Ham never really got into the match at all. Could have easily been more than four goals as well. It was an absolute demolition job from Deserve's boys. And then we move on to Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Tottenham Hotspur. And I predicted 2-1 to Tottenham. It was 1-0 to Wolves. Wolves grabbed a late goal, courtesy of Trey right, after a save was deflected into his path. Spurs never really troubled Wolves all night and looked really out of form, to be honest. Huge three points for Wolves, though. Southampton versus Leicester City. I predicted 2-0 to Leicester. It was actually just 1-0 to Southampton. Southampton grabbed a surprise win over Leicester. Even after Ward Prowse had a penalty saved. Leicester had their chances but could just not finish. Huge win for the Saints. Then we move on to Sunday's fiction and we start off with Nottingham Forest versus Everton. I predicted 1-0 to Forest. It's actually 2 all, and Brennan Johnson truly is special. Everton was set up to frustrate Forest and they did that wonderfully, but Forest still came from behind twice to salvage a point. But they did spurn their chances to win. Also, awful refereeing performance. And then we move on to uh Liverpool versus Manchester United. I predicted 3-2 to Manchester United. It was 7-0 to Liverpool. An absolute butchering from Liverpool as they demolished Manchester United. Gagpo, Salah and Nunes all netted braces, with Firmino putting the cherry on top of a historic victory over the Red Devils. Manchester United got absolutely dismantled. And finally, the Monday fixture of Brentford versus Fulham. I predicted 1-0 to Fulham. It's actually 3-2 to Brentford. A 5 goal thriller as the Bees extend their unbeaten run to 12 games. Both teams look pretty evenly matched, but Brentford at home are a very strong side. And that race for the final European spot is really heating up. So yes, that was our game week 26 predictions. We didn't get any right. Um, what's changed? We're going to go ahead and predict game week 27. Hopefully, we can do a bit better. So it's game week 27 and we're going to start off with the Saturday fixtures. We're going to look at Bournemouth versus Liverpool. Now last time these two sides faced, Liverpool put nine past them. Luckily for Bournemouth, I don't think it'll be as big of a demolition job this time. Liverpool are currently in resurgent form at the moment, climbing from mid-table to currently sit fifth in the league. Challenging for Champions League, which a few weeks ago would have seemed impossible. Bournemouth on the other hand are saying rock bottom of the league. They did look poised to grab a point against league leaders, but it was not to be. I'm going to say 5-1 to Liverpool though. After putting 7 past an inform United side, Liverpool could put 9 past Bournemouth again, but I think they'll score less this time around. This Liverpool side have come into great form recently, and I see that continuing into this match. If Liverpool's front line keeps scoring like they did against United, Bournemouth are in serious trouble. It is a very Liverpool thing to absolutely demolish Man United and then lose to Bournemouth, so, you know, either way, it'll be pretty fun. And then we move on to Leeds United versus Brighton Hove Albion. Now, this is a Leeds United side that sit just above the drop zone. And they host a Brighton side that are in the mix here for some European football next season. 
Leeds are coming off the back of a tight defeat to Chelsea, whereas Brighton are coming off the back of a comfortable win over Leeds' fellow relegation rivals West Ham. Brighton have been playing some great football under De Zerbi and are a side that loves scoring goals, as we saw last week. Leeds have struggled for gold this season, only scoring 29 to Brighton's 43 goals, which, you know, it's kind of mad. I'm going to say 3-0 to Brighton. Leeds United will have to be very strong in the back if they have any wish of withstanding a Brighton onslaught. Unfortunately for Leeds, though, their defence hasn't been brilliant this season, and this is something that the Seagulls will be looking to exploit. And as we've seen under the Zerbi, they will. It's not looking good for Leeds. And then move on to Everton versus Brentford. Another relegation-threatened side faces off against a top-half team. Everton hosts the Bees after they drew against Nottingham Forest. Brentford, on the other hand, beat Fulham in a five-goal thriller and are currently unbeaten in 12 league matches. And Brentford will definitely be looking to extend that run. Whereas Everton will, will be looking to start any run, to be honest, uh, to help them escape the clutches of the relegation zone. Everton are looking to make Goodison a fortress for the remainder of the season, and we know Dyche can set up well defensively, but Brentford have been in good form this season, and have a very potent attacking side, and now will be looking to exploit Everton's defence, which isn't the best. I'm going to say 1-0 to Brentford. I think Brentford will just grab a win at Goodison. Um, as I said, Everton want to make Goodison a fortress, so this will be a tough game. There's no doubt about that. But I think Brentford have the quality to take all three points back to London. Dyche can make the football frustrating, as we saw last week. But I think Brentford will come out victors. And then move on to Leicester City versus Chelsea. Now, Leicester City hosts a Chelsea side, which have started winning games. Unluckily for Leicester. Leicester are coming off the back of a frankly embarrassing loss to second from bottom Southampton. Um, and Leicester, they're, they're still threatened by the relegation zone and aren't fully safe just yet. Chelsea's form has not been brilliant this season, in case you haven't noticed, um, but they've won their last league and Champions League match, so it's looking up for them. Chelsea will need to stop picking up points though if they want to salvage a European finish, and to be honest, both teams need to stop picking up points if they want any resemblance of a good finish this season. I'm going to say 1-0. I think the points will be shared in Leicester, uh, both sides are quite evenly matched at the moment, um, despite the large differences between the squads. Both teams have quite a potent attacking force, and I do see both sides scoring, to be honest. Other than that, there isn't really much that separates the two sides. Um, this matchup just screams a draw. I mean, Southampton beat both these teams 1-0, so maybe it can be the Southampton L derby. Tottenham Hotspur versus Nottingham Forest. Spurs host a Nottingham Forest side that are, quite frankly, abysmal away. Forest have only scored three away goals in the league this entire season and look nowhere near as effective as we do at home. Spurs though haven't been brilliant this season either but do currently find themselves occupying a top four spot. However they did drop points to Wolves last week and they could very easily drop out of the top four this season. I mean discontent with Conte grows after a very boring match against AC Milan that sort of drop out of the Champions League. Anyway I'm going to say 3-0 to Spurs. <laughs> Unfortunately I cannot see Forest gaining anything in London. As mentioned, Forest are awful away this season and will be looking to gain anything from this match. Even a team of serial bottlers like Tottenham could not throw away a home tie against Forest, but the scenes if they did would be insane. Now, there's a very small part of me that believes Forest could do a madness here, but you know the sensible part of me is saying Tottenham are gonna toy with Forest. And that's probably right, we're awful. Now we're on to Crystal Palace versus Manchester City. The Eagles host a City side and looking to keep pace with Arsenal to keep their league hopes alive. Palace are currently winless in 9 league matches, only gaining 5 points through 2023 at the moment. Um, this is in part due to Palace's lack of threat in front of goal, whereas Manchester City on the other hand are Manchester City, who are still in some great form despite some silly dropped points here and there. I'm going to say 4-1 to City. I can't see Palace getting much from this clash at all. They should be able to grab a goal against City, but that's about it. City should easily be able to take all three points home to Manchester. I don't see Palace troubling them nearly enough as they should. Yeah, it's nothing good for Palace. And then we move on to Manchester United versus Southampton. Manchester United will be looking to put that thrashing vulnerable behind them, and hosting the Saints looks like the perfect opportunity for them to do that. Uh, Southampton grabbed a shock win over Leicester, and have been in a slight upturn in form lately. Despite their destruction at the hands of Liverpool, United are a brilliant side this season with Ten Hag getting them playing some quality, quality football in him. And they'll be looking to bounce back to continue their good form. I'm going to say 3-0 to United. I can't really see Southampton causing United any problems to be honest, especially Old Trafford. And it should be a comfortable win for the Red Devils. That being said though, Southampton have grabbed shock wins against Chelsea and Leicester this season. But those two sides are not in form like United are. And it's very unlikely that the Saints will be able to cause another upset here. I mean, it'd be crazy if they did, but I just realistically can't see that happening. I mean, United have got Rashford. He's going to have a field day in Southampton, don't you think? 
And then we've on to West Ham United versus Aston Villa. Now this is the two Claret and Blue boys clashing as West Ham hosts Aston Villa in London. Both teams are currently enjoying mixed fortunes at the moment, with Villa's campaign currently going better than the t better out of the two, I'd say. Currently sitting around middle of the table. Uh, while the form of either side has been up and down, Villa have picked up some really important wins recently. West Ham haven't been so lucky, and after getting demolished by Brighton, currently find themselves just one point above the relegation zone. Cries for Moyes to be sacked have only grown after that result against Brighton, and West Ham have yet to pull the trigger on the Scotsman. I'm going to say 2 1 to Villa though. I think the villains will run out victors in London. Villa's form under Emery, while shaky, has been generally quite good. Um, certainly better than West Ham's. And as I've said, I think Emery has Villa playing some brilliant football with the players at Watkins stepping up, stepping up and performing well. On the other hand, West Ham haven't had the best of fortunes this season and it looks like another loss for them. This could be the one that sees Moyes get sacked. And then we move on to Fulham versus Arsenal. Now this is a huge London clash as European hopefuls Fulham host top of the league Arsenal. Craven Cottage have been the backdrop for some very impressive results for Fulham this season, which has seen them soar up the table and currently find themselves sitting in 7th. For a side that many wrote off as pretty much down to get relegated, that is a very impressive for a newly promoted team to be sitting in 7th, you know, challenging some of the best teams in the league. Arsenal have also been enjoying a very impressive season themselves, with the Gunners currently sitting 5 points clear at the top of the table. Uh, this will be a very important clash for both sides and could have a massive impact on the outcome of their respective seasons. I'm going to say 2 on to Arsenal though. Both Arteta and Silva have been playing some brilliant football this season and are both a great watch from a neutral standpoint. Both teams have a knack for scoring goals and I think this clash at Craven Cottage will be no different. Arsenal have the edge uh, on individual quality and squad quality and despite Fulham performing well this season, I think Arsenal will just about edge it here. It won't be an easy match for the Gunners, there's no doubt about that, but I think they just have the quality to beat Fulham. And then we move on to Newcastle United versus Wolverhampton Wanderers. Eddie Howe's Mags host the Wolves side fighting to stave off relegation under Lopetegui. Newcastle have dropped out of the Champions League spots that they've been singing for a good majority of the season after dropping points in their last five league fixtures. Um, this failure to win has seen them side to sixth in the league, with a resurgent Liverpool overtaking them in fifth. Wolves grabbed a huge three points against Tottenham, which saw them move further from the relegation zone and are currently five points clear. Wolves have looked more assured under Lopetegui and despite their form, you know, it's been up and down, they've made some good football and look set to survive another season in the Premier League. All that being said though, I'm going to say 2-0 to Newcastle United. I think Newcastle will grab a much needed win at St James's Park. Eddie Howe has done a brilliant job with Newcastle so far this season and will be looking to finish within a European spot. They can still achieve that and I do think they might end up playing European football, maybe not Champions League, but you know, Europa, quite fun for the Newcastle boys, but they do seriously need to stop picking up points if they want to do that. It'll be a good match to show that they can still do that and to show that, you know, they can see our matches, they can get wins and that they deserve to be playing European football next season. But of course, only time will tell. Finally, the Wednesday fixtures and we start off with Southampton versus Brentford. Now, this is another really big match for the Saints as they host Brentford at St Mary's. Southampton are currently fighting for their lives as they find themselves still mired in the relegation zone. Results have been slightly better since sacking Nathan Jones, but they still face a really steep uphill battle. Brentford, on the other hand, are currently mid-table enjoying some good form, especially at home, um, and the Bees have been in good goal-scoring form too. The Bees have been in good goal-scoring form too this season with players like Tony, as you'd expect, stepping up and scoring plenty of goals. Southampton, on the other hand, have not been in great form this season, only scoring 20 goals so far. I'm going to say 3-0 to Brentford. I don't see Brentford really being too troubled by Southampton, even at St Mary's. As mentioned, their goal scoring form needs a lot to be desired, and Brentford are quite solid defensively, which will only add to the Saints' frustration. Yeah, it's not looking good for Southampton. <laughs> it's, it's not looking good, but then again, Brentford are quite a hard team to beat anyway, so you know you can't really beat yourself up too much with that result. And finally, Brighton Hove Albion versus Crystal Palace. The A23 derby returns as the Seagulls host Palace. Brighton have enjoyed a successful season so far as they score goals for fun under De Zerbi. Palace have had a fairly okay season themselves, currently sitting 12th in the league, but are nowhere near as prolific in front of goal as Brighton. Unfortunately for Palace, they aren't solid at the back either, which Brian will be looking to exploit with their wealth of goal scorers. The Seagulls are on a different beast at the Amex, and I'm sure we'll see them in some brilliant goal scoring form as they aim to take the bragging rights in this derby. I'm saying 3-1 to Brighton. I think they will win, Brighton are in brilliant form this season, as I've mentioned, and have been unplayable at times, causing a lot of sides a lot of problems. 
and I'm sure that's going to continue against their London-based rivals. Palace need to be careful as they could be dragged into the relegation scrap if they keep dropping points. Personally, I think that'll seem quite likely. Um, I don't think they'll go down, but they could be in the relegation mixer if they don't stop picking up wins, which they seem to really struggle doing at the moment. Anyway, that has been my Game Week 27 Premier League predictions. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have any predictions yourself, please leave them in the comments below. I do enjoy reading what you guys think, um, combining our ball knowledge to make some brilliant, you know, always correct predictions. Um, but yeah, I've been O2GT. Those been my Game Week 27 predictions. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.